Hi, in a previous video, I did a quite an extensive review of how to service a new tone eight note long tube chime bass. And today I wanted to show you something different. What we have here is a new tone eight note short tube bar chime bass. And this is very similar in some respects to the long tube eight note chime bass that I reviewed and serviced in the previous video. And if you're looking for more detailed servicing information, you should watch the other video. And I will put a link in the, this video's descriptions down below so it's easy for you to find it. This is a somewhat different version of a similar idea for a door chime. It is a four or eight note Westminster chime. However, I will point out that, because I was taught this many years ago, that a true Westminster chime requires four individual notes, and a chime like this only has three tone bars, so you have three different notes, so it's not a true Westminster chime. It's sort of a faux Westminster chime. I don't think Newtone ever actually even called them Westminster chimes. They're just four or eight note bar chimes. The construction of this bass is different in many respects than, than the bass in the other video, but it has a lot of similarities also. So this will not be as an extensive of a review or servicing video. If you want to see how to service the solenoids and do those sort of things, you should really watch the other video. This particular chime was manufactured in 1998, so it's about um, 15 years older or newer than the chime bass in the other video. And the other chime bass had a mechanical clock motor. It's more of an electromechanical bass. This is a fully electronic control board version. Newton switched to this in the mid-1990s. Uh, probably because manufacturing it was less expensive. So we have a control board behind the cardboard cover. We have three solenoids which are down here. They're behind the tone bars. We have three individual tone bars and it looks like they are notes T, G, and K. I'm not sure if those are real musical notes or not, but that's what it's stamped on the tone bars. And if we ding them, They're each different. They're held onto this bracket here um, with little standoffs that are part of the bracket and they're cushioned by these rubber grommets. There's three of those and then down inside the decorative tubes are other standoffs with grommets here so the bars sort of float on the grommets. So they're not held securely because they need to be isolated by the rubber grommets so they ring true notes. Uh, while these are decorative, they are actually a functional part of the chime. These are the resonating tubes. So if you were to take these away, the sound of the chime would be totally different. The vibrations of the tone bars do resonate inside the tubes and that's what gives it its volume uh, to a large extent when it rings. All bar chimes, whether it's an eight note chime like this or just your standard two note ding dong doorbell, they all have some kind of resonating chambers. That's what gives the chime its volume. So this was sent in by a customer. He indicated that he was having problem uh, with having the front door, which is the four or eight note ring correctly. This is a three entry chime and I'll show you when we get this partially disassembled. There are connections for a front door, a rear door, and a side door, and each door will ring differently. He indicated a problem with the front door ring. However, we had it on the small workbench at the office for a week, and every time someone walked by it, they would push the button to make it ring, and it always seemed to work fine. So he may have a button or a wiring problem that was overlooked at his house. Since he already had sent it here, he asked me to go ahead and do a general service on it, and replace some of the components on the circuit board for longevity and that's what we're going to do today. So the first step is we need to disassemble it because we need to get to the circuit board. So I'm going to show you how to do that. To disassemble a chime like this it's best not to remove the tone bars and their rubber grommets from the standoffs at the top and the bottom. The easiest way to do that is to remove the tubes, the tone bars, and this supporting bracket at the top as an assembly and that's what I'm going to do now. So the easiest way to do this is you take the two screws 
that hold this, the bracket at the top out. And that allows these to float. And you don't want these to sort of fall apart. So support it as you turn it over. And there are two screws in each decorative tube cover that hold the tubes to the other, the bottom part of the chassis assembly. And we're going to take these out. Once you've done that, you can actually lift the chassis assembly away from the tubes and what you have left are the three tubes with the tone bars intact on the top bracket also. If you carefully just take this and set it aside and don't wiggle it all around, it won't fall apart on you. You don't have to try to get the tone bars back on the standoffs. You might be able to see here, if you pick it up carefully, there are little felt pads. Oops. There are little felt pads on each tone bar, and that's where the striker for the solenoids hit. Sometimes these do fall off, and you can replace them. If you go down to your home improvement store, you can buy little round or square felt self-stick pads. They're primarily sold to put on cabinet, kitchen, on kitchen cabinet doors on the inside, so when you close it, they don't bang, and you can stick those on in their place, and that works really well. Since we already have, so what we have left here is now just the base assembly and you, we have good access to the solenoids. Uh, this is the circuit board at the top and this is just a cardboard insulator. It's held on with some double stick tape so we can set that off to the side. And we can see here now we have the circuit board. And as a somewhat of a surprise, we have some white build up here on the circuit board. It could possibly be just sheetrock dust because there seems to be a fair amount of that. Let's see if we can um, just brush it away. All right, so it doesn't seem to be corrosion from the board having gotten wet. It looks like it's just a buildup of sheetrock dust. So we have the circuit board here and the three solenoids with the plunger assemblies. Servicing the plunger assemblies in this style of chime is exactly like the solenoids in the other video that I made. So I'm not gonna cover how to do that again. You just have to watch the other video. Mostly what we're interested in is the circuit board. So let's go ahead and open, take that off. And then we can carefully turn it over. One of the things you have to be careful of on this is these are all of these black, what look like wires. They are wires. However, the black part that you see here, these are like hollow plastic tubes. The wires that come from the solenoids up to the different points on the board are very fine. They're the type, they're like magnet wire. They're very, very small hair size wires because they're actually the wires that come out of the electromagnetic coil that's inside each solenoid. And they're very fine. And if you twist and pull them around a lot, they'll snap off. So you have to be careful if you can avoid having to desoldering any of these from their connections, that's really the way to go. You really don't want to have to mess around with it any more than necessary. The goal on this particular service is very simple. I'm going to replace the uh, one, two, three individual capacitors that are on the board. I'm going to clean the solenoids, clean the volume control, and the four or eight note switch, which is here and put it back together after I clean the solenoids and that's really all there is to it. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at what the circuit board has on it. So here we're looking at the circuit board and you can see there's not really that much to it. Down here you have 
the four and eight note switch. So right now it's in the eight note position and if we move it down, it's in the four note position. Here we have a rheostat. The rheostat is considered a volume control and it basically adjusts the voltage that goes to the solenoid. So therefore it adjusts how hard the solenoids strike the tone bar. Down here we have a trigger IC. This is responsible for triggering each individual solenoid within the circuit. And here we have a decade counter. The decade counter is responsible for setting the tempo of how the solenoids are paced as they ring. It's what is responsible for making the first solenoid strike and then it counts and there's a pause as it counts and then the second one and then the third one. So it truly does set the tempo of the chime itself. Down here we have these are the driver transistors that actually turn the solenoids on so they strike. There's some flyback diodes down here. Uh, an interesting note about this board is that if you look right here you can see there's a jumper right here. It's actually labeled as JC and you can see there's a little blob of solder on here and also if you look going across the board we have the pins where one wire from each solenoid is soldered and over here we have an unused pin. It's labeled as pin 1 and then we have pin 2, 3, and 4. There are only three solenoids on this chime. However, this circuit board is also used on eight note long tube chimes that have four tubes. So in that case, this would have the fourth solenoid attached to it and the jumper wire would have been cut. The jumper wire, in, if you cut it, it enables the sequence to include all four solenoids. If it's intact or someone soldered it, then it bypasses pin number one and it only rings the three solenoids instead of four. So there isn't really much on these and there isn't much that actually goes wrong. In this case, I'm gonna replace three electrolytic capacitors. The common problems on this chime or this style chime board, probably the most common problem beyond mechanical issues with dirty solenoids and things like that, have to do with the chime either periodically ringing on its own and it's not a wiring or button issue or cases where for days and days and days the chime will work perfectly and then you'll hit a point that it seems to lock up and it won't ring anymore and most of the time it has to do with the hex inverting trigger chip here. Uh, sometimes the pace of the chime will be off and then it's the decade counter. Uh, when we get one of these in that has an operational problem that's not solenoids, generally we just replace both of these at the same time because these are very inexpensive and easy to get parts. So while it's here, it's just safer to do them both. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna clean the solenoids. When I get it all done, I'll put it back together and let you hear what it sounds like. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed. I went ahead and reworked the circuit board. I cleaned and serviced the solenoid assemblies and then I reassembled the chime. We have this all serviced. I have it hooked up. Let's go ahead and ring it. We'll do the side door first. And this is the bar that rings for side. And this is the bar for rear. And now we'll go ahead and ring the front. And that works just as it should. We'll go ahead and move the switch to four notes. And you just get the first four. We'll go back to eight and do it one more time. Beep. 
and that's pretty much it. Works fine, sounds good. These are the eight note bar tube chimes are some of the nicest sounding chimes that Newtone had ever made and they made these for a long time. I believe the very first ones came out probably in the 50s. Lots of different designs, different colored tubes, lots of different kinds of covers for them but they all sound very much alike. So this is a very popular chime. It's a nice compact size compared to a long tube chime. So people like their door chimes. Uh, if you need more detailed information about servicing the solenoids and maybe a larger overview of these types of chimes, please watch the other video. It gives you a lot of information. It's a very long video, it's almost an hour. So you'll learn way more than you ever wanted to. Uh, I hope you found this interesting and perhaps helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, that would be great. So that's all for today. See you on the next video.